oh, this is so different to when we started. I know. I've never felt like I'm interviewing the president before. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven people. Do you always travel with eleven people these days? I don't. Not always eleven. <laughs> sometimes twelve. I first met Troy on Skype in 2011. We became really good friends, and a few years later, he told me that he wanted to become a singer. I vividly remember walking down Kingsland Road in London with him, fantasizing about him possibly selling out two or three theatres. Little did we know what he'd go on to achieve, and who he one day would share the stage with. I just wanted to start off by saying, Troy. Congratulations. Thanks. You've done incredible for everyone in the community. I'm so proud of like everything that we did on YouTube. Instead of doing the actual challenge where we try and make each other laugh or something like I feel like people now realize like how legit of a space it is, you know what I mean? So legit that I've started wearing glasses for exactly. interviews. What do you think? Is that a <laughs> very, very cute. Unfortunately, I still do have to bring around my friend Grant. You remember him from the Spud days? Mm hmm He has pink hair now though. So he's begged to come on this interview today. Oh. Uh oh, we lost connection. Thank God. Oh, you're back. <laughs> Where did you oh. go? Is he in South Africa? Stop. Yeah, he's in South Africa, and he basically begged me for three weeks straight to be in this interview. You asked me last night if I could do this. Don't say that in front of Troy. He's going to think I'm insecure. Are you insecure? Yes, I am insecure. That actually really helped. I want to discuss when we first met, which was on Skype, actually, in like 2000 and... 12, 12 or something like that. I have taken over Casper's vlog because he's being a lovely friend and he's pumping up my mattress for me. Cas, I thought you were so famous. <laughs> <laughs> I made a video with Casper Lee called the Photo Booth Challenge and we also did an exclusive interview on his channel. Both of those videos are here. <laughs> I was so... You saw, I was or what about now? Very famous. Out of 10, <laughs> would you say like a... Like an eight? No. Maybe seven. Grant, but you never say that kind of stuff to me. I'd say six and a half. I was watching like vloggers on YouTube thinking about how that would be fun to do. And I just remember hearing about this South African guy who was like blowing up. And then I think you DM'd me on Twitter or something like that. Side note, this is the first and second last time that Troy made a mistake in this interview. As you can see, he clearly DM'd me first. Anyway, back to you handsome smart Casper in the past. And you wanted to start a YouTube channel. Yeah, so I had started a YouTube channel maybe even before you. Hey guys, it's Troy Sivan 18. I think it was October 1st, 2007. I started my YouTube channel. And then I just used to upload covers, but then I got really bored and vloggers were like, I used to watch you and Zoe and, and Tyler and just thought it would be really fun. So I started doing it. And then I convinced you to put me in touch with the director of Spud 3, which happens to be the second best movie of all time after Boy Erased. Um, yes. So this is a step up for you. And once you're home, you gotta figure out what to do next. It is. <laughs> um. <laughs> it is what you agreed? I was joking. Oh, I mean, it is. No, I'm just I mean, no, there's no, like, um, uh, how many Academy Award winning actors in this movie? At least two, and then there's one nominee? I think you're right, yeah. I think it's two and one nominee. How different is it working with an Oscar winner compared to working with a Bonker winner, 2016? What's a Bonker? Did you it's win the a The British Online... Um, <laughs> Creator Awards. Cool. It's good that uh, we're finally getting recognized for the years of work we put into our prank videos. Was Lucas forgetting his lines like I did in... No. No. No, he didn't. Not even once. Not even once. So you don't have to really... And I remember you forgetting your lines. <laughs> I, I only forgot them a few times. But like you still have to do the exact same thing and it's still like as scary and as weird and everything like that. But even for this, they they flew me out business class, put me up in the Four Seasons. You know, you've got yeah. it going on, Troy. I do. How do you stay humble with all of that? You know my family. Like, yeah. They are just typical like South African parents. Um, and I just feel like they wouldn't stand for any like bullshit. You know what I mean? Like the second I started getting a big head or whatever, they would just be like, what are you doing? Having my family around, it's so, so, so important to me. Well, have you met anyone that you'd admired in the industry and you met them and you were like, oh, well, you're actually not who I thought you would be because you've lost your head? Not really, actually. Like, I've been really surprised. Everyone's been really, really, really cool. Like, what I've really found cool. is the people I meet who are usually very successful are the ones who are the nicest and then totally. the ones who are trying to get there but haven't been there or they're insecure. Yeah, I was watching, um, I think it was like Gigi Hadid. They were like, what's the best advice that you ever got? And she was like saying, be the nicest person that you possibly can be because there is someone out there who's more beautiful than you, more talented than you, 
whatever. All you can try and do is be nicer than them so that people want to work with you more. Speak and for yourself. I don't know how many more people are out there who look like this. Who are more beautiful than you. And Especially <laughs> talented, than you. yeah. Fair enough. Okay, maybe you're the exception. Thank you. All jokes aside, this is a really important piece of advice from Troy. Other than him being talented, he is a nice person. And I feel like this is how people can really go far in life. So whatever you do in life, don't be a c it really, really, you know, pays off. You feel better about yourself. You feel like you've actually met people that day. The thing that I find like the most tiring is when people start acting like you're not just like a chill, normal person. Yeah. Like as soon as people start like opening doors for you yeah. and like making a big fuss about everything, like <laughs> that gets exhausting for me. Grant, you know what that feels like, right? Oh bro, all the time, man. All the time? But sometimes I just want to be like, don't stress, like everything's totally fine. Don't worry about it. You posted a couple of pictures on Twitter recently that were not showbiz at all. So just you hanging out with some mates who I understand you've been friends with since you were about two. Has your relationship changed with them? Do they treat you differently now? Not at all. And that's like the best thing in the entire world. I wish you treated me more like that though, Grant. More like opening up doors for you. Just every now and then, be a gentleman. There's no ways, I'll just slap you instead. You're a modern day triple threat. Yeah. Ah. YouTube music acting. <laughs> Probably can dance too, so that's no. a quadro threat. Still not dancing. No? It must have taken a lot of courage for Troy to step away from something like YouTube, which he was striving at, to attempt something that a lot of people have tried and failed. I announced that I'm gonna be going on tour starting in the US in October. So for me, the thing has always been, people are going to, even if it's like scary, people are gonna be interested in this, somebody's gonna be interested in it if you're genuinely interested in it, you know what I mean? Like if you like what you're making, somebody else is probably gonna like it too. And you have to kind of like trust that and it's scary. Like I remember when, when I was making vlogs and stuff like that and I knew that I wanted to make music and kind of had lost interest in making the vlogs. It was really, really weird to stop because like people were pissed off and stuff. Did you just bet? <laughs> <laughs> it's my burp of agreement. Cool. I know how you feel. Yeah. That's what I do when I agree with people. Instead of nodding my head, I just burp. Cool. <laughs> no, so, you know, I was scared that people were going to be pissed off and they were for a while yeah. that I wasn't making videos. And... Do you think that you would have been able to transition into the musician you are while still being a YouTuber or do you think you wouldn't have been taken seriously enough? It's interesting because that's not the reason why I stopped. Like, I didn't stop because I didn't think that people were going to take me yeah, seriously. Yeah, because you still uploaded every now and then. Yeah, I just stopped because I was getting busy and wasn't excited to make videos. But it's still a really good question because I actually don't know. This is from Alma Monty. Mm -hmm. As someone who used to be well known or famous as a YouTuber, what uh, can you tell us about the change um, in the media and how they portray you? In the beginning, it was in like every single article, you know, like YouTube, YouTuber Troy Savannah or whatever, YouTube term musician, whatever. And people kind of stopped saying that. I think I had to maybe work a little harder to just like prove like, oh no, you know, I would have been making music regardless of all this YouTube stuff. Yeah. And also it annoyed me because like I said, I've always taken YouTube seriously. Like, you know better than anyone I else. I told you, you mom, I work. Yeah. I'm happy now that the space is getting like the respect it deserves. Someone like Cardi B, she was like funny on Instagram. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then like no one took her seriously. And then she just worked so hard that you had absolutely no choice but to take her seriously. And for good reason, because she's amazing, you know? Yeah. I gotta prove people wrong! Troy had to work extra hard to prove people wrong, and now he's doing it again with his new movie, Boy Erased. The, the movie you're in is called Boy Erased. You play Gary in Boy Erased. Mm -hmm. How the hell do you do an American accent so well? And can you teach me? Do you think I did it well? Can you do it quickly? No. Say, I'm really embarrassed. Can we have a bry at your house, Casper, in an American accent? You say it, not me. Can someone else say something in American movie? Can you go to a bry at my house? Can you go to a bry at my house? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. What, any critique? I feel like the my house was where you messed it up, kind of. I went really my. Oh my, my, my. Yeah, do it again. Can we go for a bry at my house? <laughs> it wasn't that bad. Should we get a vote from the Americans? How was that? It was a solid three. <laughs> Thank you. Well, do you think that's enough to get me in the next Focus feature? Boy Erased 2. Obviously, you had to prepare for Gary. Mm. I want to know what went into that. I read the book, firstly, and then just like really deep dived in on the script, watched documentaries on conversion therapy, spoke to Joel, who directed the movie, and just kind of like really tried to immerse myself. We were in it. Like, it, yeah. it felt really, really um, intense. Fake it until you make it, right? You don't want to end up in one of those houses for any length of time. I've heard the stories and they're not good. And that's where you're likely gonna end up. 
Sarah's already there. I'd like to know what you would want people to take away from this film. My ideal situation is that a parent sees Nicole Kidman or Russell Crowe or Joel in the trailer and he's like, oh, I want to see that movie. And then um, maybe they don't have kids yet or maybe they've got young kids or maybe they've got older kids or whatever. I hope that this movie informs them on just how kind of um, pivotal of a moment a coming out can be, you know, and it's, it's in your hands as um, a loved one of someone queer, you can like completely shape that person's life. I told my family that I am gay. And um, it's a fork in the road, and I hope that this movie is gonna like send more people up the right, the right way. That reminds me of another question I got on uh, Twitter um, from Hannah Driscoll. She says, coming out seemed to be a key moment in your journey to self-acceptance. What have you overcome since you came out to make you who you are today? Well, were you at the house in LA when I uploaded my coming out video? So, I was trying to think back, yeah, I was. I was, in, I was sharing a bedroom house. with you. What? Okay, so, <laughs> quick story time. <laughs> Did you know I was gay? From the first time I ever Skyped you, I kind oh, of thought. Oh, you just like clocked but, it? But I don't remember the actual time you told me. I did from before, you know, Spud and Oh, Spud. I came out to you on Skype. I remember. I, I chatted it to you. Oh, you I, typed it to me? Yes. Okay, I would love to see if I could find those. Yeah. And guess who found it on Troy's Twitter? The messages he sent me on iMessage, not Skype. Troy, you gotta get your facts straight. There was this moment where a bunch of us were staying in a house in LA together, and I was out to, I think, Casper and Jack Harry's. And I think that was it out of the crew. And then I was like, oh guys, I gotta go upload my YouTube video. And I went upstairs and uploaded my coming out video. I want you guys to know that I'm gay. Because that day was the anniversary of my coming out, so I knew I wanted to just like get it done on that day. And then I came back downstairs. Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Troy Sivan. Hey, that's me. <laughs> okay, how the fuck has that just happened? This is from the. I, did, I wasn't even touching Wait, my phone. And everyone had seen. And it was such that's a crazy, crazy. moment, because it was like, obviously, coming out to one person is such a huge moment. Um, and then to like kill a million birds with one stone and just like everyone all of a sudden knew it was the most surreal feeling in the world walking downstairs and being like, holy shit, like this is public information now. Anyone who wants to know this about me knows this. And it had been such a deep secret for so long, then it was just like over in a second. Have you had to overcome anything since that moment to fully accept who yeah. you are? Have there been more hurdles? Yeah, completely. I mean, I think that um, growing up gay for me made me um, have a lot of like, I still have a lot of residual um, internalized homophobia and stuff like that from just growing up. Like, I remember even when I came out, I was out to my family, but I would still like go to my room and put on headphones to watch like America's Next Top Model because I thought my parents would think like, oh, that's too gay or whatever, you know, even though I was out to them, it was like just weird stuff that lingered on. And it's still like, well, rear its ugly head every now and then. Like, I was shooting a music video for my song Bloom, and in the video I'm like, like makeup and crazy styling and um, amazing like hair looks and stuff. And that was 100% what I wanted to do and I was having the best day ever, but I still had this moment where I like looked in the mirror and I was like, I saw the person looking back at me and I got, I felt like 14 again and I got this like pang of panic where I was like, holy shit, am I you know really about to do this kind of thing? Um, and you gotta constantly like be, breaking down those walls that you build up as a kid. Um, and I think it'll probably take me like a whole lifetime to, to get over all of that. Do you think it's been easier since that time for people? Maybe not, it's a hard question because around the world it's different in, in different mm. areas, but do you think in the US? I would hope so, you know, I, I, I think in general, um, from what I've felt, it feels like we're on an upward trajectory in the right direction um, as far as like, representation in the media goes, you know what I mean? There's more like queer artists coming up in music, there's more queer stories being told in film and television and like all of that stuff is so helpful because like I really had so little of it growing up um, and I remember the moments where like the first time I ever saw a gay character on TV, I remember that moment, you know? And so I think that that'll really, really help people, yeah. you know, kind of come to terms with things sooner um, and hopefully it's getting easier. And thank you for talking about that. Of course. It's very apparent to me that Troy wants to be part of the solution and that's why he constantly uses his platform to help others. One of the things I kind of struggle with is getting nervous about doing new things or... Yeah. How did you deal with moving from your bedroom to going on stage with 
some of the biggest stars in the world. Even though I know they're real people, but in that moment, I will I will start feeling really nervous. Mm -hmm. And how do you I deal with no, how do you deal with nerves? I need to, I need to explain this to you. So Casper interviews you know a lot of like celebrities for uh, for his channel. People who watch the channel don't know this, but Casper gets super nervous and goes super red beforehand. In a way, like, and he needs, like, he needs, like, a pep talk. I was asking this for someone else, Grant. Why do you have to embarrass me like that? Well, you do it, though. Like, in the end of the day, you push through and yeah. you do the interview. And aren't you always happy that you did afterwards? Oh, 100%. It's yeah. never, it's never actually turned out to be a problem post-interview, but pre-interview, like, or pre-performing, or even if I'm doing a pitch for, say, like a company I'm involved with, I'll be on the toilet for three hours beforehand. And I, <laughs> I wanted to know if there's anything, or there was a point in your career where you just you got so used to this that um, you were you never got those nerves, or did you ever have those nerves to begin with? I always have those nerves still, um, and I think the process of like getting nervous, pushing through it, being happy on the other side, you get used to that process. You know what I mean? So then it, it kind of um, it gets, it does get easier, I think. But then yeah. they can throw the tiniest curveball. Like, let's say it's like one of my shows on my tour. By the 15th show, I feel pretty relaxed. But then all of a sudden the show is outside. Or there'll be like one little sound problem that happens in the beginning. And it's like I'm doing the first show all over again. You know what I mean? So yeah. I don't think you ever get over it. You don't really want to, I don't think either. Because it, you know, keeps things exciting. It does. I'm going to get a lot of trouble if I don't ask Lisa met Sean's question. Mm -hmm. I assume it's Sean Mendes. I what? literally thought my dad. <laughs> yeah, thought it's I probably thought. your dad, actually. Yeah. <laughs> what did you like most about working with Ariana Grande? Oh my god. Dude, she's so funny. Yeah. Like, I think people know that about her, but um, it makes everything just so joyous. Like, we just had the best time. Um, like, the music video shoot was just the funnest day of our lives. She makes me, like, die laughing, and obviously her voice, like, this goes without saying, but she's like, just the best yeah. and she is so inspiring to me and also she keeps like her family close she keeps really good friends close not at all caught up in any sort of you know like hullabaloo or whatever she's just like i love that word hullabaloo i was gonna swear <laughs> it's fine myself. you're okay it's fair. Um, i get demonetized anyway because uh, of grant fair enough no, but yeah, she's just, she's awesome. Revelation, did you get the opportunity to write that because you were in the movie or did you, were you going to do that anyway and then you joined the movie? No, so I got the part in the movie first as an actor. I was like, I want to be involved in like every way that I possibly can. Every opportunity I had to speak to Joel or the producers or anyone, I was like, I'm happy to write new songs for the movie. You can have my entire catalog of songs, whatever you guys want to do, yeah. I'm, I'm down. I just want to be involved. Um, and I just kept saying it and saying it and then like there was a moment where I didn't hear anything So I organized a little like writing camp where me and some friends wrote five songs that I sent to Joel to pitch for the movie None of those songs made it. So I just was like, okay, I gotta Fuck. keep going and like keep trying <laughs> And then I heard that Jonesy was doing the soundtrack and I got so excited. Yeah, um, and He and I'm like I'm like going behind Joel, the director's back to like organize these coffee meetings and stuff because I like want to get on the soundtrack. Yeah. And um, Jonesy was like, there's this one song that's just like a piano thing that I don't know, I don't know how to write it's lyrics a revelation. for. So then I went into the studio and wrote that and did that. You did that yourself? Yeah. But you also wanted to be on it. You couldn't have provided me with that opportunity. No, I forgot about you. Whoa. <laughs> don't laugh at that kind of stuff, Grant. That's serious. That was that. Now it's in the movie. And I did it. So I'm super happy. That's really good. I heard the whole thing. Thanks. I don't know if I was allowed to, but I did. I hacked, in, I hacked into the Universal Focus. Database. Yeah, nice. Yeah. This is the most important question of the whole entire interview. What Do you need it? a backup dancer for your next tour? Mm. I do. But I can feel where this is going and I'm worried. <laughs> Just wiggle around. Like that. I mean, that, that really does look like what I do, so I guess you can... And I could be your stunt double. That sounds like a better job. I'm with Troy there. Stunt double is a better better option. Thanks, Troy. Thanks. Uh, see. Grant, you can't hug him because you're in South Africa. Do you have a girlfriend? Yeah. Don't. Yeah. It's a revelation. There's no hell